bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otobiel. And now, today's word. As you know, I'm dealing with life in the spirit. Life in the spirit. And this is part number 10 of Life in the Spirit. And my subtitle is The Spirit's Power. The Spirit's Power. And, and by the Spirit's Power, I'm not talking about necessarily about the Holy Spirit, but I'm talking about the power of your spirit. The life of the believer is a spirit life. That means it is a life that is lived through the spirit and not the flesh. The Holy Spirit lives in the spirit of the believer. When we say that the Holy Spirit lives in us, he doesn't live in our flesh, he doesn't live in our soul, he lives in our spirit. And the Holy Spirit reveals himself through the spirit of the believer. The Holy Spirit works through the spirit of the believer. The Holy Spirit ministers through the spirit of the believer. And the Holy Spirit speaks through the spirit of the believer. God himself is a spirit. We live our lives in the spirit. And God's promises to us are always to our spirit. So it's always important to know who is the spirit man and to understand what the spirit man has, the power he has, so we can live the life that God wants for us. Just before I get into my main um, teaching, just uh, a reference from Luke chapter 10, verse 17 and, uh, and to 19. Jesus said, to the 70 who had returned after going to do his work. Uh, the Bible says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to know to that. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is the promise of Jesus to us. And it's a promise he makes to us, not to your flesh, but to your spirit, that we have power over every power of the enemy. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Uh, the Greek tense is an imperfect tense. And, and so if, uh, if you read it literally, uh, it would sound like, I was seeing Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I was seeing. Uh, so the impression you get from that verse is that when Jesus sent the 70 to go and do his work although he was not physically present with them he was spiritually with them and he was watching what was going on so he says when you were casting out the demons i saw it when you were praying for the sick i saw it and and i saw satan's defeat uh, through your ministry anytime believers go out to minister jesus goes with us and he goes with us into the camp of the enemy and that's why we don't fear enemy territory that's why we can boldly go into any place where demons are because he gives us power over all the power of the enemy somebody say i have power all right now that power is in your spirit and it's important that we understand the power in our spirit and that is what drove Paul to pray and he records a prayer that he he prayed for the Ephesians uh, in Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verses 15 to 13 and this is what the Apostle Paul says therefore I also after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers What's he praying about when Paul says, I'm praying for the believers? What is he praying about? 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, and put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. It's a very long sentence, but I'll try to break it down. Paul is basically talking about God's power. And he says that God's power is exceedingly great. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? God's power is exceedingly great. The word exceeding means that it surpasses everything. There is nothing in this created order that is greater than God's power. Nothing. God's power is exceeding. It surpasses everything in greatness. So when we're dealing with, the, with God's power, we're dealing with the greatest power ever imaginable in the universe. There is nothing greater than the power of God. Not the power of the sun, not the power of constellations somewhere, not the power of planets, not the power of atoms, not the power of chemicals. God's power is exceeding. Not the power of demons, not the power of Satan. God's power exceeds in greatness. So when you're dealing with God's power, you have to know what power you're dealing with. You're dealing with exceeding great power. Somebody say exceeding and great. Say with me, God's power is exceeding and great. That's what the passage says. God's power is exceeding and God's power is great. Now, if there is such great power, the question we ask is, whom does it work for? Whom does God's power work for? What, where is the power of God focused? So we have to know whom it works for. The power of God is great. If it's against you, you are in trouble. If it's for you, you are in good shape. So whom is this power working for? And, and the passage answers it. It says it works for those who believe. It is toward us who believe. So this exceeding power of God, this great power of God is working. Whom is it working for? It's working for those who believe in Jesus Christ. It's not working against us. It's working for us. Because if God's power is working against you, you have no chance. You have no chance. Just throw in the towel, surrender. If God is against you, you are gone. But thank God, his power is not against you, but his power is for you. His power is working towards you. So Paul says there is exceedingly great power of God. Whom is it working for? It's working for those who believe in Jesus Christ. You and I who are believers born again. Then he talks about the proof of the power. What is the proof of this power? This power that Paul is talking about, that he says is exceeding great, that is towards us, he gives us the proof of the power. And the proof is that this power worked in Jesus Christ. This power worked in Jesus Christ. This is God's proof of concept. 
God's power at work in the spirit of Christ. So we, if we want to see how God's power works, we have to see how that power worked in the life of Jesus Christ. It is the power that worked in Jesus Christ when he was alive. It is the power that worked in Jesus Christ when he died. But Paul doesn't focus much on the power at work in Jesus when he was alive. He talked about more about the power that worked in Jesus when he died. Now, Jesus was crucified on the cross and he died. We know that. He died on the cross. Before Jesus died, he prayed and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So, Jesus died, but his spirit didn't die. His spirit was still alive. Spirit was not affected by death. Of course, no human being's spirit dies when they die. But Jesus was very careful about committing his spirit into the hands of the Father. So, although Jesus was physically dead, his spirit was not dead. And this exceeding power that we talked about, this exceeding power was still at work in the spirit of Jesus. Body is dead, but the spirit has exceeding power in it. I want you to think about it. The body is dead, but the spirit has exceeding power in it. The body is dead and buried in a tomb. And a stone is rolled up the tomb. But the spirit is alive. And the spirit has exceeding power of God working in it. In the spirit of Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying that this exceeding power, the proof is that it worked in Jesus. How did it work in Jesus? It says it raised him from the dead. It raised him from the dead. Now, it may seem like a very simple thing. But when a person dies, all their physical functions stop. The heart stops beating. Brain, dead. Liver, dead. Kidney, dead. Cells, dead. Everything is dead. But the Bible says... That this power that was still in the spirit of Jesus Christ raised this dead body back to life. To raise the body back to life, this exceeding power in the spirit of Christ activated the dead cells of his body so that what was considered ended came back to life. But that's not all. When he raised the body of Jesus Christ from the dead, he didn't raise it up to be like the body as it was before he died. He raised it up into another form called a glorified body. So the spirit in Christ activated the body of Christ and turn it into a different kind of body, a glorified body that can walk through walls and walk outside of walls, be in one place at one time and be in another place at another time. And all of this is because the exceeding power is still at work in the spirit of Jesus Christ activating his body. I want you to follow this carefully because we're going to land somewhere. So Paul is saying... I pray that the eyes of your understanding will, you will get this. I pray you will get it. What do you get? That there is exceeding power that is working towards you. You say, what is that kind of power? This is the kind of power. What did it do? It raised Jesus from the dead. It raised him. It activated his body. It revived his body. It transformed his body. It made him alive. That power is at work inside you. And not only did the power raise Jesus from the dead, he says that that power seated Jesus far above all powers, all principalities, all authority, all dominion, all might. How did it happen? Because there was something working inside of Jesus. 
that activated his body, lifted him up, seated him far above all principality. And not only that, subjected all forces under his feet. And how did it work? Because of the exceeding greatness of God's power. Where was the power working? In Jesus. How did it work? It raised him from the dead. In another way, it seated him above and subjected him to all power. So we see the proof of this concept of the spirit in our spirits and what it does to the body of Jesus Christ. The question is, can what happened in Jesus be replicated? Did it only happen to Jesus? Can it work in our lives also? Jesus proved that it is possible for those who have partaken of human nature to be seated at the right hand of the Father. It is possible for those who have once partaken of human nature to be lifted up above all principality and power. And he didn't do it for himself because Jesus didn't need that. Before he became flesh, he already had power over all principalities and power. He was already above them. What he came to do is to prove whether flesh and blood can have that power. That's why he became flesh and blood to demonstrate that it, it can happen. So after it happens, now he has to see how he can duplicate what has happened to him in the life of all human beings who believe in him and trust him. That this same exceeding power can work in their spirits and do for them what it did for Jesus Christ. So the question is, where is this exceeding power now? The same Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Somebody say the power is at work in me. Was the power at work in Jesus? How did it function in Jesus? When Jesus died, this power raised him from the dead. Seated him above all principality and power. Subjected all powers to him. This power that was in Jesus, the scripture says, is now at work in us. It's not working in your head, working in your spirit. At work in your spirit. So what will it do in our spirits? What does this power do in our spirits? Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Oh, I love this. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebe, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebe. Email otebe at centralgospel.com or call Plus 233-302-688-000.